This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. Welcome to KTSM 9 News at 6, live on location tonight from the Lincoln Park area in central El Paso as our Small Town Spotlight series rolls on through the summer, all made possible by the fine folks over at Charlie Clark Nissan. And we just have a fantastic show planned out for you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Natasia Paloma. And I'm Andy Morgan, actually coming to you live here from Old Sheepdog Brewery. We got to dive into this uh, craft beers that they're making and all the artwork that is obviously on not only the beer cans, but you also have all the artwork that is surrounding this brewery. Very, very cool to see. And we're also getting the aroma right now from El Tiger. Uh, what a spread that I we know. have here. You got the uh, carnitas over here, and I think the With chicharron. Chicharrones, yes. You got El Pastor over there, and then the carne asada. I think you had a little bit of a cheese um, there on that flour tortilla. Smells absolutely delicious. Can't wait to dive in. That is what these uh, small town spotlights this is what it's all about. Yeah, it looks so good. And we are in the perfect place here at Old Sheepdog Brewery. All the art, because we are right across the street from Lincoln Park. You know, they say, Andy, that Lincoln Park is El Corazón del Paso and El Paso. And I feel like all those murals that we see out there, they're the heartbeat. They make the park come to life. Uh, and you see that blending of Aztec roots. You see the Pachuco, the Chicano culture, and also the Catholic faith. Uh, so you really get a sense of what El Paso is all about. And being here at a place like Old Cheap Dog Brewery, you see that kind of come out. You see the community also uh, really rally around that as well. So a lot of uh, a lot of spirit, shall we say, here in Lincoln Park and uh, Old Sheep Dog Brewery, definitely a part of that spirit. That's right. And we are showcasing all of Central El Paso. So also across the freeway, yeah. you have the M Municipal Rose Garden. Have you ever taken a walk through there? So I've done it actually once. An absolutely gorgeous place here in El Paso. And again, one of those things that I feel like at least the the Rose Garden, you hear about it, but it's something that you don't necessarily think about. Oh, that that would actually be a fun Saturday afternoon, something to do. I, would, I want to say it's just so tranquil and beautiful mm -hmm. to walk through that garden. And we actually want to take you there. Let's go ahead and take a look. The Rose Garden started, um, it officially opened to the public in 1956. It started with a partnership between um, the Rose Society of El Paso and in that time, the city of El Paso, but it has transitioned over into the Master Gardeners of El Paso taking care of the Rose Garden. In the 60s, we progressed to four acres and they've opened up the other side of the garden. So we are now at four acres, uh, over 1,200 rose bushes, and I think over 200 varieties of bushes as well. Come and visit April or October, those are the best times. But the entire garden will always have roses in bloom, mm -hmm. just not the entire garden. Mm -hmm. This summer in particular has been brutal. A lot of our roses struggled. Uh, we unfortunately lost a few of them because this heat was just something we've never experienced here at this garden mm -hmm. without the rains that we normally get in July. One of the locations that people can come and enjoy with their family and friends uh, it's also an outdoor activity where you can come in, mainly look at something beautiful, relax. Uh, we've been talking a lot about mental health after COVID, and if you need a space where you can come and relax and think a little bit, it's always quiet, it's always very peaceful. So we do invite all members of the public to kind of find it and enjoy it. It's a beautiful place to come and relax, to see something beautiful, to see all these varieties, colors, and it, it's amazing, it's amazing. Such a beautiful place there in central El Paso. Andy, I can't take it anymore. I this know, is smelling smell. so good. You have to take a bite and tell us which what, one should I go for? What you're tasting here. I'm, I, I was know. I was leaning over here. I'm an El Pastor like guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get into it. And, and you know that it's it, it's gonna be good as long as it's messy. Yes, Excuse and I believe my reach there's here. some refried beans on the bottom. Yep, and on the top that queso bed. fresco. Uh -huh, so a lot of uh -huh. different flavors. You have that onion there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks pretty good. What do it's you think? Good. Muy rico, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. And uh, our Robert Bettis is out there uh, right outside of Old Sheepdog Brewery. Robert, do you have any food? We have lots here. I brought the Tide pin too, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you two are enjoying yourself. How's, how's the taste, Andy? 
It's <laughs> delicious. Juicy. One of the best. One of the best I've had in yeah. El Paso. Yeah. Okay. Well, guess what? You're not the only ones who have access to delicious food. That's right. It's the one, the only. It's the Bobby Bone from the Charlie Clark Automotive Dealerships. Yeah. I love yes, you, sir. Bobby. Yes, sir. Nice to see you. You know, we're driving around in our Charlie Clark Nissan. We've stopped here in front of a food truck. You ready to try it I'm out? Ready to Come try on out. Let's go. go. Of course, this is always here, right in front of the Old Sheepdog Brewery, right in the central part of town. The place to be and they have a little parking lot where they have the El Tigre and they've also got this Star Burgers truck over here. Hey Bobby, do you uh do you like burgers? I love burgers. One, two, three, I'm, I'm your burger, burger man. man. That's, That's what, what I am. am. It's Star burgers. burgers and it's in a van. Okay, let's go over here. Now, joining me now is Mr. Mendoza. Oh, you own this are you there. kidding me right now? Hi guys, welcome to Star Burgers and Fries. My name is Christopher Mendoza, the proud owner. Oh my goodness. Today we have featured three of our best-selling smash burgers. Our number one seller right here is the Ava Yoda, oh my which goodness. is our bacon cheeseburger Yoda. with our fresh sliced avocado, Beautiful. thick cut uh, bacon. Uh, Chris, we, we, want, we want to hear a lot more with you. It's going to be really hot this Labor Day weekend, but just get yourself a cold beverage and a burger here at the food truck. I'm going to have your full forecast coming up in just a little bit bit. Come in here. I'm your burger man. That's what I am. Yeah. It's our burger. So much good food. Look at those hamburgers. Andy, you're yeah, you, chowing you, down you, on those you tacos. You got this, Natasha. I'm, I'm going to join you in a second. Let's go ahead and you toss it to. over to Carla Draxler. She has our headlines. Carla, if you could just take a little bit so I can go ahead and, and get a couple bites <laughs> in. You go ahead, Natasha. I have your top stories of today. A man is dead after running a red light in northeast El Paso, according to El Paso police. The crash happened last Friday on Gateway South and Sean Haggerty. The man killed was identified as 40 year old uh, Tuan Duong from Houston. Investigators say Duong ran a red light when the driver of a semi then T boned his car. He was taken to the hospital but died later from his injuries. The driver of the semi suffered a broken rib and a man is now behind bars for burglarizing several car dealerships in El Paso. According to the El Paso Sheriff's Office, deputies responded to Texas car deals where they found several cars, two firearms and $5,000 in cash were stolen. Investigators then arrested Javon Curley for the burglaries. And that was your look at the top stories for today. I'm going to send things over back to Natasia and Andy. Natasia, I hope you got to try those tacos. They are so she delicious. Did. I got a couple bites in. So I'm still good. I'm still mid bite over here. I'm loving the the beans with the meat. It's just delicious. Almost like the, he he explained it as like a bed of beans. Yeah. It Which is absolutely so adds good. to the taste. Very very good. Oh, all right. So as we mentioned, we're here in Central El Paso. We're right across the street from Lincoln Park. We're at Old Sheepdog Brewery. But we want to talk about those murals. Of course, we can't get through the show without talking about all the art in this area. Absolutely. Been here since the 1970s. Take a look. This area is referred to as Lincoln Park. It was created here back in the 1977. This used to be all neighborhoods, homes, businesses and it was all torn down to make way for the freeway projects. At that time, the city uh, got a lease to turn it into a public community space. And so the park was born uh, in about 1977. And in 1981, Felipe Adame, a mural artist uh, out in San Diego and also here in El Paso, very well known, painted the first mural, La Virgen de Guadalupe, at the corner of Durazno and Uva, in honor of uh, uh, El Calvario Catholic Church which was one of the buildings that had been torn down to, to make way for the freeway. And that kind of began the, uh, the murals and uh, the whole Chicano Park theme here at, at Lincoln Park in El Paso. We have our own culture here. We like to celebrate it as Mexican American. And we want to like keep it with that theme. Uh, we have a lot of history that we can express on these columns. There's about 40 plus columns that already been painted. We have about 40 plus columns, they're blank. So we have, you know, opportunities to express ourselves and celebrate our culture. You know, young people will discover there's a lot of greatness in our culture and especially our indigenous pre-Columbian culture. 
And we need to celebrate that point. We're not, our people were not savages. There were scientists, artists, medicine people, astronomers. Check them out. You'll be proud. They were great. We can be great. And uh, the community takes great pride in this park and the art and the, and the whole meaning of, of uh, the neighborhood and what, what used to be the uh, thriving neighborhood that was demolished to make way for the freeways, but now has been reborn uh, with this community space for events and uh, car shows, all kinds of things that take place here at the park to, uh, to bring a little pride back to the people of El Paso. All right, and real quickly, I just want to show this. This is me and Nathan. They have Lincoln Park Day where they just line up all those beautiful lowriders. This was a couple years ago. This is actually happening on September 17th from 11 to 5 p.m. Andy, it gets so packed. Look at all those good snacks. That's little Nathan with his papas, but it is so packed. People out in their pachuco outfits. It is so cool, such a great event. Absolutely, it looks like a great time. And uh, for more on Lincoln Park and everything that's happening here, let's send it over to Monica. Hey guys, yeah, so Lincoln Center is something that I've covered almost 10 years ago and my witness is right here. This is Hector Gonzalez. He is part of the Lincoln Convention, uh, Convention Conservation Committee. Did Correct. I get that right? Lincoln Park Conservation Committee. There Correct. we go. And so Hector, tell us a little bit about what you guys have been doing to keep it alive. Well, we've, we are the group that uh, creates and maintains the murals. Uh, we are the group that work to, to save the center. And now we continue to work to reopen uh, the center. We've partnered with the Mexican American Cultural Institute and we're working to reopen the center for, for the community. That's incredible. And you really have been doing such a great job. The anchors kind of touched a little bit on it, but how about you tell us more about this amazing event? Well, the event coming up is Lincoln Park Day. It's an annual event. We're in our 19th year. Uh, it is El Paso's premier cultural event. It is a uh, kind of taken over for the Fiesta de las Flores in the absence of, of that event. So everybody anticipates the big car show, live music, matachines, Azteca dancers, and everything that goes along with uh, the culture here in El Paso. And that's going to be happening on September the 17th, right here at Lincoln Park. Uh, it's an all-day event. Come out and join us. Oh, that's incredible. Is there any mission or anything that people should know? Absolutely free to the public. Come on out, bring your chairs, be prepared to picnic in the park all day everything is absolutely free there'll be vendors there'll be food trucks and there'll be about 300 low riders from all over the southwest well, now i know what i'm going to be doing that weekend thank you so much hector guys don't go anywhere we have much more right after this break
We explore these topics and more with the mental health professionals at Emergence Health Network. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands only certified broadcast meteorologist. Right above the old Sheepdog Brewery is the fun, funky, fab vintage shop. You know what it makes me want to? Celebrate good times. Come on. That's right. And Jennifer Nava, this was your brainchild. This is a wonderful place. Thank you so much. I love it. You got clothes. You've got furniture. Let's go see more of that in just a moment. Let's talk about the heat coming up this Labor Day weekend. Here comes your exclusive nine hour forecast for Thursday. Temperatures are going up. High temperature tomorrow, 98 degrees with warm southerly breezes at about five to 15 miles per hour and lots of sunshine as high pressure settles in for our Labor Day weekend ahead. Here are the high temperatures so far today. 91 Alamogordo, 94 Deming, 95 Juarez, 93 at the airport and 88 Van Horn. A look at the satellite radar composite. We have a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms working their way through the mountains of the Gila wilderness, but elsewhere through the borderland, very quiet tonight. A beautiful night with light winds and clear skies. Your allergy forecast, not good at all. 9.6 on Thursday, 10 Friday, and 10.2 on Saturday. Tomorrow, high temperatures, 95 Alabagordo, 96 for Deming, 98 for Juarez, 95 Van Horn, 92 at the pass. Tonight for you, Las Cruces, clear skies and 65 degrees. The low temperature tomorrow, you'll warm up to 96 in the afternoon with south winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight at the International Airport, 69, the low temperature, clear skies, light winds, and beautiful. Tomorrow, a beautiful day, really, but warmer, 98, the high temperature. Now, only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. As we cruise into our Labor Day weekend, temperatures continue to climb. 99 on Friday, 100 potentially on Saturday. Partly cloudy skies Sunday with a high of 98. Labor Day, not bad at all, breezy and 97. And we'll have to strike up the misery meter potentially again on Wednesday with a high temperature of 100. So, Jennifer, in addition to the beautiful clothing, you also have vintage furniture. What is this set we're sitting on? So right now we're sitting on an original late 50s, early 60s turquoise sectional. It's beautiful, and I love your hat. She's quite a... Pretty, pretty woman, woman walking, walking down, down the street. street. Pretty woman, the kind I'd like to meet. Pretty woman, I can't believe you. You're not the truth. No one could look as good as you. We'll be right back. Stay with KTSM 9 News.
Follow KTSM 9 News on Instagram. Putting local first. And now, KTSM 9 Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen Byers and Enderman Injury Lawyers. This is the highlight of my life to date in 32 years. I've always wanted to go live in front of beer vats, and that is where we are at our small town spotlight at the old Cheap Dog Brewery. My buddy Jacob Losby, who runs a brewery in Oregon, would be so proud of me because I remember absolutely nothing about what he's told me about all of these things. All I know is that they brew some incredible beer here at Old Sheep Dog Brewery. You know what is awesome with a beer? Golf. I actually don't even golf. Secret for you. But I do like to go have a beer when my friends go golfing. And a great place to go golfing in El Paso is Scarate Golf Course. It has been the only public course in El Paso for almost 70 years now. Take a look. Hi, I'm Desiree Gonzalez and welcome to Escarate Golf Course. It's a county-owned golf course. What makes this difference from all the other golf courses in the city is that it is a public golf course. We opened in 1955. We are a generation golf course. We've had people here that have been golfing with their grandfathers. We have grandfathers that have been here since they've been with their grandfathers. That's my son-in-law, Jake. We've been golfing together for a few years now. Yeah. But you're right, I mean, the main reason why I'm here is because of my dad and his uncles. They, they grew up in Smeltertown and this was the place. We have a main 18 golf course, uh, which is your typical, and then we have our Delta 9, which is a great learning course for those who are really learning. You don't need a membership to come. Our prices are very affordable for a golf course especially. We do have a pro shop, and we do also have a driving range and a uh, clubhouse. What the great thing about this in the summer is that we have our nights under the lights which is Fridays and Saturdays, you get a special on the range balls. We keep our lights open on the, on the driving range until about uh, 10 p.m. You can see our wildlife. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I like coming into a place and saying, hi, Ms. Gonzalez, how are you? And just people knowing who you are, and that's what you get from the staff. And I think that that makes a huge deal for me, and just the, the personality, the, the personableness of, of staff, and just being here. <laughs> Awesome story there. Switching gears to the pitch where San Elizario native Ricardo Pepe has received another call up to the United States men's national team for friendlies versus Uzbekistan and Oman on September 9th and 12th, respectively. Pepe has seven goals and 16 appearances with the USMNT since his first call up in the fall of 2021. Along those lines, El Paso Locomotive FC midfielder Eric Calvillo also received a national team call up to play for El Salvador in CONCACAF Nations League matches on September 7th and 10th against Guatemala and Trinidad and Tobago. Calvillo has eight career caps for La Selecta. That he's arguably been El Paso's best player this season. They host Monterey Bay this Saturday night. On the gridiron, UTEP is continuing its preparations for its home opener Saturday versus Incarnate Word, a team that made the FCS semifinals last year. The Cardinals have reloaded again under new head coach Clint Killo, including the addition of quarterback Zach Calzada. Now, he did not play at all last year at Auburn, but in 2021 when he was at Texas A&M, he threw for over 2,000 yards and 17 touchdowns, engineering an Aggies upset of number one Alabama, throwing three touchdowns in that game. I mean, A&M recruited him because he's a good player, right? I mean, the talent's there for him, um, and I'm sure he's excited. They got a great offense. You know, he's coming in. He's they got, got a neat offense for him to be a part of, and he's looking forward to being a part of that. And and uh, and that's kind of the mo for a lot of their players right now. A lot of their, you know, their secondaries guys that have started in Power Five places. Kickoff for that one is at 7 p.m. Saturday at the Sun Bowl. Finally, New Mexico State defensive coordinator, coordinator Nate Dryling and his family current go, currently going through a tough time. His wife, Alexa, was just diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer at just 31 years old tonight at 10 on KTSM. We've got their story and why two words, be brave, guys, means so much to this family. Looking forward to bringing that story tonight. Yeah, really looking forward to this and also looking forward to the spread that we somehow have to get through here. That's right. We want to thank uh, I've got a game plan. Star Burgers for the these amazing burgers. Their best seller is the Ava Yoda. Uh, and again, thank you to Old Sheepdog Brewery for allowing us to be here. Also, the residents here in this area, Lincoln Park, we were so we learned so much and we're so grateful to be here with you today. We'll see you back in the studio at 10 o'clock. Have a great night. Hair, makeup, and men's grooming sponsored by 